Okay. Um, there's a question that uh, came to me um, about a week ago, and I'm surprised that the the question uh, took so long to come my way. Uh, I guess people noticed uh, what was going on on my channel, uh, and then noticed um, a glaring element, I guess, that was missing uh, from my channel. And that is the endorsement of other people uh, in the martial arts. Most channels do have a certain, um, they may endorse uh, other uh, uh, people in their particular martial art or in their particular uh, genre. Uh, sport um, uh, uh, fighters may um, recommend the material of another sport. Uh, sport fighter or sport teacher um, and I think the uh, glaring omission uh, from from uh, my channel uh, has suddenly been noticeable so a few people actually have asked me why don't I endorse uh, other uh, martial arts other combative teachers so I'm going to answer that question here. There's three reasons why I generally don't uh, endorse other combative teachers, all right, or other self-defense teachers. Reason number one: uh, I'm five seven and a half. I'm five seven and a half. Now, anyone who says that height and weight doesn't matter um, shouldn't be trusted. Okay, height and weight does matter. Now, there are ways that you can uh, uh, transcend your height. There are ways that you can transcend your, excuse me, transcend your weight. But it is ridiculous and totally untrue that height and weight does not matter. Now, having said that, I'm five seven and a half, not a small man. So if anybody has seen me, if you've ever paid attention when I'm training, you see I'm not small. Uh, I can carry close to 200 pounds. My heart rate is 55 beats a minute. Um, so I'm in good shape and I can do damage. However, however, there is a certain, there's certain tools that I need at 5'7", that someone at 6'3", 6'4", 250 pounds may not need, okay? When I look at most combative teachers, most, and I mean 95% of the combative teachers I look at that I see or people may send me a video of, they're 6'1 and over. Some of them are so big that it really doesn't make a difference what they're training in. Some of them are really so big, so tall, so heavy, that it doesn't make a difference what they're training in. Many people who are 5'9", five 5'10", five they get so excited looking at some of these combative teachers, some of these self-defense teachers on social media, not realizing they're just not going to be able to pull off some of the techniques that these combative teachers use. An example would be, you will see a man 6'2", 6'3" going up against someone who is 6'1", 6'2", and enter into a clinch with that individual. Now, you have people who are 5'9", five 5'10", five looking at that man, 6'3", enter into a clinch with another man, 6'1", 6'2", 250 pounds, voluntarily. I would not recommend that someone voluntarily enter into a clinch, a movie type type of clinch, with someone who has him by 6 inches and close to 70 pounds. It doesn't make sense. So for me, most of what combative teachers teach, for me at 5'7", yes, almost 200 pounds, but still 5'7 and a half, okay? I would say doesn't work for me. It simply does not work for me. There are elements, again, there are elements that I have to do. I have to do that other people, maybe 6'3", 6'4", do not have to be as concerned with. For example, my way of, my, what I would need 
And what I've always used was extreme violence. Extreme violence. Extreme violence to injure the person as bad as I have to injure that person. This is what I've done in my life. Okay? I'm a domesticated man, a grandfather now, you know. But in my day, I knew, I knew that my forte was not simply punching and kicking at five foot seven, but to mount an offense that was not held back by fear of incarceration. I'm going to say that again. At 5'7", I had to mount an offense that was not held back by fear of incarceration. So what does that mean? There were times I need to employ a weapon. There were times I needed to employ a weapon where someone maybe 6'3", 6'4", wouldn't have to. So that's number one. Me being 5'7 and a half, most of what I see self-defense teachers teach would never work for me. Would never work for me. Number two, most of what, and I'm talking about the most famous or most well-known self-defense combative teachers, most of what they teach would never work in an environment that was predatory or predatorial or a predatory environment, okay, with very little to no policing, okay, in a pretty much in a predatory environment where people were left, where men were left to their own resources, uh, where it was an environment where it was the, 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 um, where only the strong survived, okay, most of what uh, of these um, well-known and well-paid um, self-defense and combative teachers, most of what they, they teach would never work, would never work in an environment where people were not held back uh, by some kind of uh, ethical rules. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, where you can be jumped, where they would consider it a victory uh, for three people to jump on you, where a person might consider it a victory to stab you while you're not looking. Okay, or for someone to hold you while another person stabbed you, um, it maybe cut out your liver, or something like tempted to cut out your liver or sever your spine. Most of what combative teachers teach today, most of the combative teachers, I personally know, because I've been in those kind of environments, predatory environments, and I will tell you, most of what they teach would not work. Would not work. Number three. There are many combative teachers, some of the most well-known combative teachers, who teach sport in genes. They teach sport in genes. What do I mean by that? They give you the impression that they're teaching combatives because they're in street clothes, when in reality they are teaching sport and they are shaping the street to fit their, their, their uh, um, interpretation of a martial art. Okay, they are shaping a, the street. They're giving a perception that the streets mirror their martial art instead of making their martial art mirror the reality of the streets. So that is why for 12 years I really not I really have not endorsed um, other martial artists, or other self-defense teachers for those reasons. Okay, number number one, at five seven and a half, they simply would not work for me. The, the techniques that these people use who have me by six inches, maybe, you know, as much as 100 pounds, these particular individuals probably don't have to train at all. Unless they're going to, unless they're bouncers and going up against other people that, they, you know, that they, they may run into, uh, people their size. Most of these people, most of these people, 6'2", 6'3", 250 pounds, they can walk the streets of virtually any major city and never, ever have to defend themselves. That is a fact. So if they're really not working in corrections, they're not working as police officers, they're not um, uh, working uh, in bars or, or as bouncers or, or security in those kind of environments, if they're not doing that, they, a man 6'3", 250 pounds can go his entire life. You know, providing he doesn't go out to a lot of bars around, the, in, you know, party, around a party with a lot of drunk people around a lot of drunk people, he can go his entire life and never have a serious fight. And this is really the fact of the matter is, is that really if self-defense teachers are not working as bouncers, 
if self-defense teachers have no military background, or not even military background, because those guys can't fight very good, but if they have no background as bouncers, no background as correction officers, okay? Forget police, because depending on where, police, depending on where they will be working as police officers, they, they're not going to have to defend themselves either, okay? Let's face it. So if you're not working as bouncers and as, or as correction officers, where's, the, where's their expertise? Where is their expertise? They really don't have to have a great deal of, of um, experience. Okay, this, this is a fact. The second reason is most of what they teach, most of what they teach would never work in a lawless environment. It would never work in a lawless environment. I've been in a lawless environment. Okay, and I will tell you, most of what they do would not work. Number three, number three, that was number two, number three. Many of them, many of them who claim they're teaching Krav Maga, who claim they're teaching uh, combat Jeet Kune Do, many of them really teach sport in jeans or their martial art in jeans. They're trying to give the impression that the streets mirror their martial art, when in fact they should be trying to get their martial art to mirror the streets. Okay? So whenever you see somebody going for a single leg, a... a, a um, a, a low single, a freestyle takedown where you're, you're attacking below the hip, below the waist. When you see people dropping a knee to get a, 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 a takedown, okay, I don't care what their name is. I don't care how long they've trained in martial art. They are not legitimate. They are not legitimate. When you see people deliberately go to the ground, deliberately, not being pushed to the ground, not being knocked down, but in their technique, in their self-defense technique, they deliberately go to the ground when there's no need to do so, to get an arm bar, right? So you will click on their, or, or buy their course or something like that. They're not legitimate. So hopefully I, I answered that question. There's three reasons why I don't into, endorse, and I haven't endorsed for 12 years, martial art teachers and self-defense teachers on social media. And I've seen virtually all of them. So please don't tell me the guy that you like is somebody that I think that I would think is legit. It, and I'm because I, for the following reasons. One, most of what they teach would never have worked for me at five, seven and a half. OK, number two, most of what they teach and what they put on social media would never work in a lawless, predatory environment. Number three, most of what they teach is really sport. It's really sport and genes. That's it. And they give the impression that the art that they're teaching reflects the street. When in reality, it doesn't reflect the street. It reflects the cage, reflects the dojo, reflects the mat. That's what it reflects. But they give the impression that it is street worthy because they're in street clothes. Okay? So, there's the answer for you. Hopefully, it's satisfactory. See you next video.